This is Mark from Ballast Precision Machine. If you watch the cylinder head series, then you've seen this head before. It previously suffered from oxidation of the valve seats due to prolonged use of race gas and practically all of the exhaust valves leaked. This is the one you watched me clean up in a video titled Cylinder Head 105, Valve Job Basics. It wasn't bad enough to warrant a complete valve job, and the steps I took fixed the problem. Those same steps are all used in the course of doing a complete valve job, and it's a 100 series video. I know it's not a full and complete valve job. The key from your perspective should be to perform only the procedures necessary to make the valve seat properly again, and nothing more. Once you cut a new seat or grind a valve, it affects the geometry of everything on the other end. But if you have a bent, mangled valve or a damaged seat, then that previous video will not help you fix your problem. All it's going to do is help you find it. I'm sorry I didn't have a worse problem to show you than I did. So for humility's sake, I created a problem just so that I could bring you the rest of the process in a 200 series video. I bought 1mm oversized Supertech valves and got permission to shoot the whole valve job process being performed. I'll let Mark do most of the talking today. Ladies, control yourselves! It's hard to get these damn seals off on some of these heads. This is like a slide hammer. It's got a flared end on it that grabs underneath the seal. And then you slide that down and use it and then it off. Nice! If I don't have the tools, I weigh the necessity and the expense of owning them. I don't plan to buy anything shown in this video except for the work being done. That's cool, man. Quick and easy, and as long as you ginger with it, it's not too bad. This head is getting all of its extraneous parts, like the valve stem seals, oil diverter, and gallery plugs removed so it can be cleaned to the bare metal inside and out. Then we're going to knock some bigger holes in it. My head was previously ported, so 1mm oversized valves aren't really going to work against me. The biggest airflow benefits I will see will come from the finished shapes of the valves and the This thing really makes easy work of these seals. Indeed. The seal hammer. Yep. Before you're fighting it with a damn pair of pliers, you can't get down in there. Mark has lots of practice and experience doing this, and I've got a much better idea of how the camera works. This head has had a lot of work done to it in the past already. Ported on the inside, polished on the outside, recessed stock valves, standard three angle radius cut valve job, shaved valve guides, and 15 thousandths off the deck. Basically it's some work that would make some people insist on throwing it away. That's fine, I forgive them already. There's not much to gain from using oversized valves, so I'm not recommending this as a necessary modification on a street strip setup. Bigger valves don't automatically increase airflow all by themselves. One millimeter isn't going to do much for airflow on a DSM head without additional port work being performed to the runners and the bowls. The best use of oversized valves is really just to restore your valve train geometry. Using a bigger valve gives you a little more meat to play with when you're cutting seats, so you can set the valve installed height where you want it. Alrighty, let me get my mask on. Now that the head has been degreased and flushed, it's being blasted to clean out the carbon from hard to reach places. This will cause some extra work on my part because it trashes the polished finish, but I'd rather start off my next build with all of that carbon removed. This is a Sun and VGS20 radius cutter. Mark is going to explain how to set this machine up. Find the right size pilot that fits the uh, guide. And the next thing you do before I level the head is make sure that my, my work tool here is going, to, is going to hit it. You see how far off? I've got the machine all the way this way, but I'm this far off. So I got to slide the head in. See, so loosen these up, loosen these up, and you have adjustments right here. I'll move it into the to the one, to the one. You can see we're still off. I'm gonna go in two more to that one, to that one. We're still off. I'll go in one more click, and then block them and physically check it. I'm gonna wait to do that sticky head down here. And Make sure it's got, you know, work room inside of there. And this tool's got to come out. Take that out. Put in our other drive tool. Sorry, dude. I'm going to mess up this drive. Cut! <laughs> All right, so we're good on that. Now we can level the head. So I'll level it this way first. level as a judge. Level it side to side. 
This is a transfer level. So what it does, you level the level to the head. You know what I'm saying? So once you get once you get that dead, I want to get that level. This transfers this over to this. And then you level the head to whatever this yeah, one is. So it simulates the head. Now we'll be able to Side to side, this. And what I always do is go back and re-level it this way. Because you level twice, cut once. Because it's going to be absolutely short. A tiny bit off. There's a little infection here. <laughs> Now, next step is when I do the set the cutter. What this is, this is a setup jig, and what happens is it's got a pointer on it. And what you do is you stick your valve into the fixture and just put it in there till it's snug. And we want this pointer to locate on the face of the valve where we want our cutter to cut. And so what we do is we loosen this up, and we loosen this up, and you take that pointer. And on the exhaust valve, on a performance valve job, you want it just a little bit off, say roughly 10 thousandths off the edge of the valve. All right, so you kind of get your mark. It's still loose. You just put it, kind of point it where you want. Tighten the valve up. Take your finger and lock that in. And what I do is, so I can absolutely be absolutely positively sure, that gives me what I need to do to find out exactly where I'm at on it. All right, it looks like we're just a tiny bit too close to the edge of the valve, so I'm going to cheat it up just a little bit. You know, it puts us to about, you know, roughly you want about 10 thousandths off the edge of the valve on the exhaust. On the intake, you can put it right on the edge. So you hold your finger there, tighten the jack down. And then what I do is I loosen the valve back up. I go back for another double check, and I put the pointer back on the valve, and there again, measure twice, cut once. It looks like we're just about where we need to be. I don't know if you can see that or not. We're about, it's, a, it's about 10 thousandths off the edge of the valve. Okay, now we take our cutter and these cut three angles at one time. This is our exhaust cutter. I don't know if you can see the three angles, but it's rolled into the edge right there. Okay, see those three angles? The one in the middle is a 45. The bottom is the 60 and the top is the 30. It gives you that radius airflow that comes in there. That's the advantage of the cutter is you get more of a roll than you do with the stones. The stones are more of a sharp edge. edge mm -hmm. you know? All right, loosen the cutter up, and then you have to use the exact pilot that you're doing the valve job with because they're all different sizes. You stick the pilot in the fixture, tighten it down, take your cutter, Slide it on to the pilot, and then the object of the game is to get their pointer on the top edge of the 45. We stick an adjustment in there, and we back off on the screw, and we get the cutter down where it needs to be. As you can see, it's kind of hard to see to get it exactly where you want it. So I have to put it over in the light. Critical step that's got to be right on the money. I mean, there's no can't be off or anything. Let me lock the cutter down. There again, before I go cutting, I'm gonna recheck it all again. Stick it back in the fixture. Check it again. Then I'm satisfied. That's where it needs to be. Take our pilot. Stick it back in there. We need a return spring. Bounce spring. That goes over top of the pilot and it lets our cutter bounce up and down without be laying on the seat. Bring the machine over, bring it down, lock it, lock it and tap the throttle and it will uh, self-center itself on the pilot. Right, unlock it, check your speed. Yeah, what we're gonna do is cut and look for three angles. So once we get the three angles in, 
and we'll set a stop. And then we're going to lap a valve in before we cut the rest to be absolutely sure we're where we want to be on the base of the valve. If it's not, then we can stop and we can reset the cutter and then we can go from there. But right now, we're just going to do a preliminary cut and see where we're at. Idea is to make them all the same. So once we get this one straight and I set the stop all the way through, it should be pretty close within a couple of thousands. I'm going to slowly bring the carter down. I'm starting to cut. We're putting an oversized valve in the head, so it's going to make a. It's going to move the seat out some. Moving material out of the throat, you know, getting rid of that bottom material. That's why the radius cutter is so good because it relieves all that bottom material. Instead of the air having to go all the way around it, it takes a lot of it out and just makes it a short turn. Our second angle starting to come in. Very ginger with the machine is bring it down slow. pressure and just letting the cutter do its thing. The exhaust seats are notoriously harder than the intake, so sometimes it takes more effort to, to cut the exhaust, especially going to a bigger valve because it's a harder seat. show itself. Right now I'm going to stop. I'm going to set my stop. I'm going to move the machine. Now, I don't know if you can see that. Look at the bottom angle and then look for the transition into the 45. So you can see the difference in the angles. I got something. Okay, now I'm gonna look at it under the microscope. All right, doesn't look bad. So at this point, what we want to do is we're gonna lap that one valve in so we can see where it is on there versus where it is on the valve on the valve there. This is a grease mixed valve lapping compound. That's the Permatex stuff, oil based? Yep, oil based, right. That's right. Kind of a fan of clover. Gosh, it works all the same way. It's just a check reference, that's all. You got that's a rough up. and a fine. Yep, a rough and a fine. You drop that in. Let me see what we got. I don't do every one, I do one intake and one exhaust. And if I'm not sure something's right, I'll do another one. I'll do them all. Now, looking to see where that seat is on the valve. I want it off the edge, about right where it is. Can you see that? This is a SuperTech Inconel exhaust valve. You can clearly see the seat lapped around the face of the valve, that the seat is even and located correctly. Note the swirl polished stem cut on a circular radius. This is done for strength and airflow characteristics of the exhaust ports. There's no real advantage of using an undercut valve here like there would be for an intake port because the gases flow the opposite direction. A thinner valve stem here would make this valve more susceptible to failing from the temperatures achieved inside the exhaust ports. Show up. Good. Looks nice. That's a nice seat. That looks good. All right, now we'll do the same thing looking at here, making sure that we've got a nice uh, lap all the way around. I'm also making sure that that 30 degree angle came in. Barely came in. Yeah, barely came in. Like. 
Yep. And the reason for that is I don't want to sink to that. You can always go back and add some more to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, going on to the next seat. We have our cutter, everything's set up. We're satisfied where we're at here. Mm -hmm. Move on to the next one. Now it's just now repeating yourself. Bring it down to there, lock it. Center it. Off we go. We've got our stop set, so that'll be a reference point for us. We'll still look for that top set. For all three angles to come in. And I'll check the seat with the magnifying glass. Make sure it looks like the other one. Actually, I'm going to cut it a little bit more. I don't see enough, enough of the 30. So we'll go back. Yeah, it looks more exactly like the one side. So that's good. All right, got two down and six to go. What it's doing is cutting just a little bit off the side of the chamber wall, which actually gives you a little bit easier for the air to get around the edge of the valve because you're putting a bigger valve in it. Take care of our exhaust. Cut that one just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'm particular about stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. to intake side. So we gotta do the same thing, find out where this is gonna to relate to this. So we're gonna slide it out.
because the intake and exhaust are so close in size now, I'm going to stick with this uh, same cutter that we're using. And what I'm going to do is just reset it up to the intake size. I was satisfied with the setup, so I'm resetting it again. And we're rechecking again. Make sure we are right on the money. Oversized intakes as well. Yep. All right, let's see what we got. The first intake one. We want to give it a good look over and see where we're at. Mm -hmm. Let's lap one in and see where we're at on that. Somebody commented on 105. That's not a valve job. You didn't even grind any valves. I don't really need to on this one because I'm replacing them. But in order to restore a valve seat, we're going to show you the valve grinding process. This is a stock 4G63 intake valve. There's previously nothing wrong with it to require this, but we're doing it anyway. Alright, first step is we tip the, we give it a fresh surface on the tip of the valve. We machine this down and do a cleanup cut on that so the rock arm has something true to hit. So they get worn down, you know, after a while. Fresh 45. You want me to put a 30 on a back cut on it, like we were talking about? Yeah, it could. The face of the valve is cleaned up with plenty of margin left. Now we're about to show you how to turn your stock valves into high flow, high performance valves. Alright, I'm going to put a back cut on it. You need to use a 30 degree angle. We'll change the machine. 30. Lock it down, and we're just going to knock that sharp edge off right now. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Just need a new seal. Gives it a problem. You want me to wipe it off? No, that's right. But that just knocks that sharp edge off. And yours, like you said, had to undercut still, where it still got skinny at the bottom, much more air get by it. And we call that a 30 degree back cut, and then the, on yours was the undercut still. So two things combined, you know, helps too. 
but that's it. You got it, bud. So here's the SuperTech nitride coated back cut undercut intake valve we were just talking about. Note that the 30 is right up to the edge of where the coating begins, and the narrower stem is intended to let more airflow around it. This is the before shot. Mark is going to lap this in to see where the seat hits the face of the valve. Heard that. Mm -hmm. You hear it? Mm -hmm. it? Tells me it's good and left in. We're going to check our, where it is on the face of the valve. Which looks good. You drive it on the street too, don't you? Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit off the edge just because it's a street seeing street duty. <clears throat> All it was is a track queen. We kind of move it all the way to the edge, but always keep that street in mind. And that's not that much difference, but most of it's right on the edge. It's just a shiny little sliver of silver around that edge. Plus, we're using a performance cutter too. So oh, yeah. All right, now let's check our seat. So we're good, we're lapped in, we got our stop set. We've lapped one in, we got seven more to go. Go a little bit deeper, not quite deep enough. We got 45 of the slight 30, and that is the other one, so we're good. Moving on. I'm sure a few of you are asking why I'm bothering with this if my previous repair was sufficient. My main reasoning for these modifications is to shorten my valve install height because my new cams offer 33 thousandths more lift than my previous ones. It didn't hurt that the materials in the design of the valves I chose were a vast improvement over the stock valves, but moving the valves closer to the piston gives my rocker arms a little bit more room to do their jobs properly. Shinning springs doesn't correct rocker angles. It's important if you're bolting a wild set of camshafts into your cylinder head to check with your machinist to make sure there's adequate clearance for the rockers and for the pistons. The right way to deal with valve clearance issues is not using a thicker head gasket. This valve job, together with my valve selection, the port work previously performed in the cylinder head, my new cams and springs, which we'll be taking a closer look at soon, should make this head move quite a bit more air. There are other conditions this work affects which we will be investigating during assembly. Alright, that takes care of the bell, guys.